Coral reefs are amazing ecosystems when we view them from underwater. But it's only when we review reefs from the air that the true size and scale of these amazing ecosystems becomes apparent. Reefs are structures that are built by the growth of non-mobile benthic organisms that live in aquatic environments. That's the definition of a reef. It's a structure that's built through the activity of living animals. Reefs aren't just made from corals, we can also have reefs built from oysters. But when you think about a reef, you probably think of a coral reef, particularly if you've grown up in Queensland in Australia. In fact, reef-like structures have existed for more than 3,000 million years. We can see evidence of these ancient reef structures in the fossil record and in geological structures such as we see in some of these images here. So if you go to the Pilbara region of Western Australia, you can see evidence of 3,400 million year old stromatolite reefs. We also have some evidence in Australia of reefs of, of the age of about 400 million years, which were constructed by rugose, corals, coralline algae and special sponges. And we also have some structures made from archaeocyacids, and I'll show you an image of these in the moment. The main thing to remember though is that the modern coral reefs that we have today were preceded by reef-like structures that were formed by very different animals. Ancient reefs were formed by living rocks called stromatolites. Essentially, stromatolites are biological rocks. They're formed by microbial organisms called cyanobacteria. These are photosynthetic organisms that form mats on the top of sediments. The mats are quite sticky and they trap sediment into the mat and this actually gets cemented into a sedimentary layer. You can see that here in this image. We have layers of glued together sediments. Over time, a new mat of microorganisms forms on the top of the existing sediment and it grows up over time through this continual process of gluing together sediments that are trapped on the surface of these microbial mats. Another ancient reef builder was an archaeocyathid sponge and they look quite similar to some of the sponges that we see living today. They have an attachment to the base they have a spongy structure with pores for pumping water in and out. And they have some external growths that are linking different units of this sponge together. So organisms that look quite similar to the sponges we see on reefs today built reef reefs many millions of years ago. Actually, the animals that, that have built reefs have changed over time. So around 600 million years ago, reefs were constructed by these archaeocyathid sponges and those stromatolites that I mentioned before. Around 400 million years ago, new organisms evolved and began to form reefs, and these were tabulate and rugose corals. These type of corals actually built a different kind of limestone skeleton than the skeleton that is built by corals that live on reefs today. Some other organisms, including crinoids, brachiopods, and bivalves, have also contributed to the construction of reefs hundreds of million years ago. It's only really been in the last 175 to 200 million years that stony corals, the animals that build modern reefs, have taken over as being the major constructors of coral reefs. So coral reefs, more specifically, are geomorphological structures that are formed by production and accumulation of limestone, or calcium carbonate, by stony corals. We'll talk more about what are corals, how they build reefs in later sections, but you can see here an image of a branching coral, an Acropora. These corals form communities of mixed coral species, these coral communities form larger coral reefs, such as the one we flew over earlier, and composites of reefs form these large geological structures that are actually visible from space, from satellites. Reefs are formed by calcium carbonate that is excreted by the animals that live on the reef. 
Aragonite is the main form of calcium carbonate that corals produce their skeletons with nowadays. There's actually two forms of calcium carbonate though, aragonite and calcite. And it's the calcite type of calcium carbonate that fossil corals used to produce, those tabulate and rugose corals that I mentioned before. You can see in this image here some of these aragonite or calcium carbonate crystals. And these can form just naturally in a solution if you have high enough concentrations of calcium and carbonate ions. But they can also be produced by a biological process called calcification. And we'll talk more about that in other sections of this program. This is actually a fossil coral, which has been preserved for around 150 million years ago from a period in the distant past called the Jurassic. And this fossil is about four and a half centimeters in diameter. And you can see some of the key features of the skeleton that look very similar to the features of skeletons of corals today. In this fossil, we can see the septa, which are divisions in the skeleton. You can see them here fanning out from this central point. And in fact, this fossil coral looks very similar to some corals that are living today. We're zooming in now to look at the family tree and the evolutionary history of the stony corals. We can see that the ancestors of stony corals arose about 170 million years ago. Over time, some of those ancestors went extinct during various events that have occurred in our geological history of the planet. And over time, new lineages, new family trees of corals have arisen. We'll talk more about how to identify corals in later sections, but you can see here the evolutionary history of the major branching corals, free living or mushroom corals, folios and mound shaped corals. So this really here is a family tree of the most recent living stony corals and their evolution over a much longer time period.